Welcome back to the wonderful Grand Hall at the Battersea Arts Centre for the final instalment of this year's British Book Awards. And it's a pleasure to be with you for the second part of this celebration of the best books, the best people, the best ideas and publishers in this strangest of years. The industry has been presented with enormous obstacles over the past 12 months, particularly small publishers, shops and academic presses. When bookshops closed their doors last year, many faced an uncertain future. So it's been emotional to hear reports of giddy customers going back in droves. 3.7 million print books sold in the first week of reopening and The Guardian reported that shoppers were browsing, smelling and generally acting like kids in a sweet shop. As you know, sales were up last year with audiobook sales jumping almost 40%. But we weren't just reading more, we were reading more widely. The annual What Kids Are Reading report analysed the habits of a million kids in the UK and Ireland and showed that their reading skills had improved over lockdown, with many picking up longer, more difficult books, as well as unearthing the finding that three in five children said reading made them feel better during that difficult time. Meanwhile, Bloomsbury's profits jumped 60%. They suggested that their list's biggest hits tapped into a public thirst for new ideas, citing Rutger Bregman's Humankind and Rennie Edo Lodge's Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. It's a digital awards show this year, but that seems appropriate given that everything from book fairs to fairies are now available online. In case you've missed the latter, do check her out. She's a keen reader in St. Colum, Cornwall, who sparked a global trend. She started streaming as the Cornish Book Fairy last year, reading classic children's stories in March, and has since been joined by book fairies from Canada, the US, Switzerland, New Zealand, Australia, and Trinidad. It's a timely reminder of the magic of reading and its ability to take us beyond our circumstances, to show us a way forward, and when necessary, to make it up as we go along. Now to start part two of this year's celebrations, here is Director of Publisher Relations, Emma Lowe, and Editor of the Bookseller, Philip Jones. And so to the second half of the British Book Awards, where we get down and granular with those working at the coalface, from booksellers to publicists, agents to rights teams. There's even an award or three for publishers. Enjoy it, enjoy your colleagues' successes, and then do it all over again. For without your efforts and your joy, the business of books would be just a business, and nobody wants that. Congratulations to all our shortlists and good luck this evening. We hope you enjoy the virtual parties and really hope to see you at a physical event very soon. In particular, I'd like to thank our partners, our sponsors, and all those who helped us put the show together. Without them and their support, we wouldn't be here tonight raising a toast to your success and your achievements. Now it's back to Lauren to get part two of the presentation started. Cheers. Thank you, Philip and Emma. We start the Trade Awards with Marketing Strategy of the Year, sponsored by global market information and measurement business, Nielsen Book. The 10 nominations here cleverly adapted their marketing plans in the face of the pandemic and still managed to propel their new releases and authors into the spotlight using innovative digital strategies to create a fantastic buzz and sustain sales. And here to reveal the winner, well, what a treat we have. They are two best friends from London and the founders of the Black Girls Book Club, a collective of black women attempting to break barriers in literature and publishing. Good evening, everybody. We are Melissa and Natalie, co-founders of the Mariah Carey approved Black Girls Book Club, debut authors of Grown, a Black Girl's Guide to Glowing Up, and according to Roxane Gay, the most chic and stylish thing she has ever done. At Black Girls Book Club, we know how important it is to get the right books in the hands of the right readers. And so we are so happy and honoured to be announcing the winner of the Marketing Strategy of the Year. Let me just open my envelope. The winner of the British Book Award for Marketing Strategy of the Year is HarperCollins, Matt Platcher, Lindsay Terrell and Olivia Marsden for The Mirror and the Light. Congratulations. Oh, oh that's amazing. <laughs> I want to say a huge thank you to Lindsay and Liv and my team. Working on this together has been the absolute highlight of my career. It's been a massive, huge 
effort across the whole of Fourth Estate, Patrick with his amazing publicity campaign, Paul, Melissa, Bethan, Ben and Amara on, on the sales campaign, um, Nick, Hillary's wonderful editor, David, my boss, and most importantly, Hillary for writing such an incredible book. It's been amazing. Wow, as Cromwell would say, to God and profit. It's the Venetian merchant's toast. Thank you, Matt. Congratulations to our winning marketing strategy of the year, Fourth Estate for the Mirror and the Light. And thank you to Nielsen Book, Melissa Cummings Quarry, and Natalie A. Carter. Next up, we have Publicity Campaign of the Year in association with the Publishers Publicity Circle. A hectic news agenda and the cancellation of events conspired against these nine finalists, but they all found ways to adapt and make their books visible across the trade and to the wider media too. Here, we have a high commendation. For the epitome of crisis management and turning some bad luck into publicity gold, congratulations to Alice Herbert from John Murray Press for Word Perfect by Susie Dent. But to reveal the winner is the new voice of Woman's Hour on BBC Radio 4, where she brings her incredible skills as a journalist to this much-loved show, as well as BBC Two's Newsnight and author of the incredibly insightful best-selling book, Period, which will be published in paperback by HQ next month. Hello, Emma Barnett here. It's a huge privilege to present one of these awards with a shiny gold envelope, the British Book Awards. Congratulations to everybody involved. And as someone who's recently written a book, uh, period, it's about bloody time. I'm so thrilled to be able to do this in my house with my toddler around my feet, because it is about bloody time that we just acknowledge that that's reality. On to the award that I'm presenting, Publicity Campaign of the Year Award. Huge congratulations to everybody who took part. The winner is... Bob Publicity Campaign Award, Penguin Generals Anna Ridley for the year of Bernadine Evaristo. Huge congratulations, have a wonderful celebration. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. That's absolutely extraordinary, incredible. Thank you so much. So the biggest thank you has to go to Bernadine for working so incredibly hard, um, for her incredible drive and energy being such an inspiration um, and such joy to work with. Um, also thanks to Simon Prosser, Bernadine's long-term publisher at Hamish Hamilton and Hannah Chukwu, assistant editor at Hamish Hamilton. Um, big thanks have to go to the incredible comms team I work with at Penguin General. So the fabulous Alexia Tomidis, who ran the marketing side of the campaign and Rosie Safferty, um, who was then our assistant and now campaigns officer, who was a huge support. Um, and also to the broader comms team, um, who are just the most incredibly supportive and collaborative bunch. And in fact, um, we had a brainstorm session in the summer where we were just thinking, look, the sky's the limit here. What should we be going after? And that um, is where people generously gave loads of ideas, including Sunny Time Style guest edit, um, that then went on to become reality. So I'm super grateful for that. Um, Emma Patterson, Bernadine's agent, who managed all the international publishers. Um, Joanna Pryor, the fantastic MD of Penguin General, who's an absolutely wonderful boss and a true visionary. Um, and to, thank you to the judges for giving the campaign the spotlight. Fabulous stuff. Well done. Winner of the British Book Award for Publicity Campaign of the Year, Penguin Generals Anna Ridley and thank you to the PPC and Emma Barnett. The award for Small Press of the Year now and it's sponsored by CPI Books, delivering innovative marketing and print production solutions to publishers worldwide. The nine nominations here are all national and regional winners and demonstrate impressive creativity and energy that stood them in such a good stead in a challenging 2020. Again, we have a high commendation for coming so far in their first year of publishing. So it's congratulations to Magic Cat Publishing. But to reveal the winner, you may know her as Eponine in Les Mis or perhaps from her YouTube channel. Hopefully you also know her for her Sunday Times best-selling books. Her next novel, With This Kiss, will be published early next year. Before then, you'll be able to see her in Andrew Lloyd Webber's new musical, Cinderella. But for now, she's on your Nibby's screen. 
Hello, I'm Carrie Hope Fletcher and I'm presenting the award for Small Press of the Year. I'm so honoured to be part of the British Book Awards, even if it's only digitally and not in person, because after the year we've had, it's just so wonderful to be celebrating such a creative industry. So without further ado, the Small Press of the Year winner is Sweet Cherry. Oh, wonderful. That's amazing. That's exciting. Oh, that's, yeah, I'm very happy with that. It's amazing to win this category. We've been nominated before and I think we've just been aware of how much, like, how many other small presses there are doing amazing things as well. So it's really great. And I think it's something that comes at a nice moment for us because it is coming up for 10 years of Sweet Cherry and it's something that could not have happened without the support of every single one of my colleagues and everyone in, you know, editorial, production, design, sales, marketing, publicity, rights, just everyone has come together and sort of made all of this happen. So we're really happy. <laughs> I'm sure everyone will be in the company. So, <laughs> um, I'd like to say that every small company knows that they rely on the hard work of every single team member, um, sort of everyone from management level, even to our interns and any work experience, um, interns that we've had supporting us, um, and the support of bookshops, um, distributors, anyone that's sort of been an advocate for Sweet Cherry and Ard Books and helped us on this journey. Um, it's all down to that. Thank you, Cecilia and Divya, winner of the British Book Award for Small Press of the Year, Sweet Cherry. And thank you to CPI Books and Carrie Hope Fletcher. Next, academic, educational and professional publishing sponsored by leading pre-press production specialists, Westchester Education Services. The six nominations here all turned a crisis into an opportunity for evolution and innovation, using digital content and delivery not only to preserve their sales, but to make home-based learning easier for grateful students, academics and parents. Announcing this winner is a British journalist, author, presenter and founder of the education charity Speakers for Schools. He's also the host of the weekly political discussion show Peston and an upcoming novelist with his debut political thriller The Whistleblower publishing this September. It's Robert Peston. So having just written the least academic book of my entire career, a rip-roaring thriller, The Whistleblower. Uh, set in the 1990s for the marvellous Bonnier books. You can't imagine what a thrill it is, what a privilege it is to be presenting the Academic Educational and Professional Publisher of the Year. And here is the magic envelope. I'm opening it now. And the winner is obviously deserved uh, Bloomsbury Academic. Really? Oh my goodness. I, wow. I was not expecting that. That is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I, I'm so delighted and I know that all of the team here will be absolutely thrilled to bits. I mean, they, they're so passionate. They've worked so hard. I, I think to have this award will just produce such a lovely ray of sunshine and we're so grateful. Goodness me, I wasn't expecting that. But thank you so much to all of the judges. So I probably should. I think one of the things I'd like to do is, is thank everyone at Bloomsbury for their commitment, their creativity and their hard work, uh, their, their passion, their resilience throughout last year, um, and particularly our authors who are absolutely fantastic. Um, they come to us because they know that we can create impact for their work many different formats, many different channels to market. And they are absolutely the lifeblood of what we do. And you know they've had their own challenges throughout last year as well. But we are so delighted to be representing their voices. And then to the wider um, executive and management team at, at Bloomsbury, thank you for your continued investment in us and to Nigel for his strong um, belief in our long-term vision. Um, thank you to everyone. It, it, this means a huge amount to us. Very well done to our winning academic, educational and professional publisher of the year, Bloomsbury Academic. 
And thank you to Westchester Education Services and of course, Robert Peston. Now, one of nine finalists is about to become Children's Bookseller of the Year. Their award is sponsored by Macmillan Children's Books, which is the home to old classics such as Alice in Wonderland and newer classics for today's children, The Gruffalo and Dear Zoo among them. Now, all nine nominations here demonstrate the indefatigable spirit of children's independent booksellers in 2020. Their endlessly creative responses to lockdowns and social distancing provided lifelines to reading for children, parents and schools and reminded everyone that bookshops are at the heart of their communities. To present Children's Bookseller, let's welcome back one of our Nibby's judges and one of Britain's best loved comedians, Sir Lenny Henry. Children's bookseller of the year, yeah, that's my category, and I'm singing from home. I was so excited. This one is the children's bookseller of the year. I'm going to open the envelope now. We're going to find out. Children's bookseller of the year. It's so exciting. Oh, dear. The Children's Bookseller of the Year is Moon Lane. Congratulations. Oh my God, that is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Oh my God. Um, thank you so much. This is um, an amazing honor. I can't believe um, that we've won for a second year in a row. It's incredible and a huge um, reflection of all the hard work of our team who are just amazing and uh, this is for them uh, we would be nothing without all of the brilliant people who work at moon lane um and for all the initiative that they take and the brilliant um drive forwards um in order to increase and raise the quality in children's books that every single member of the moon lane team is committed to um so thank you huge thank you to all of them thank you to the judges um and to the bookseller for running these and to the sponsors so grateful um it's just such an honor thank you congratulations two years in a row the children's bookseller of the year moon lane and our thanks to macmillan children's books and of course sir lenny henry Our next two trade awards are the British Book Awards for Exports, sponsored by Times Publishing Group and Panzing Distribution, who provide cutting edge international distribution, retail and warehousing solutions. We start with export sales under £10 million. With no travel or book fairs, bookshops closed and massive disruption, publishers' exports could have ground to a halt. Instead, these publishers rolled up their sleeves and found new ways to serve their customers and sell their books. We are thrilled to introduce our next presenter, the former governor of the Bank of England, COP26 advisor, marathon runner, Everton supporter, and the author of the recently published Manifesto for Change, Values. It's Mark Carney. Hello. It's a great pleasure for me to be present at these digital 2021 British Book Awards. Uh, it's been an exceptionally challenging year for you all and I'd like to salute the innovation, the dedication, the perseverance that you've displayed in getting the ideas of authors out to people who want to read them. Uh, it's, uh, it's a remarkable achievement uh, and it shows the best values. And as an author myself, uh, at least temporarily author myself, uh, I know uh, and appreciate just how important that is. I also know um, that there is a relationship between values and value which is probably why I've been chosen to um, present the award for export sales below 10 million pounds. So without further ado, I will open the sealed envelope and reveal that the winner of the British Book Award for exports below 10 million pounds is Nosy Crow. Congratulations. Wow, thank you so much. Um, to be recognised for a second year in a row is completely unexpected and, and is so proud for us all at Nosy Crow. Um, thank you also to Times Publishing and Pan Singh for making this happen. 
Um, but this is really the recognition of the work of the whole 2020 export team, Peter, Maddie and Alex, and also Kate and Adrian. Um, I just want to thank them for their encouragement, belief and motivation in setting up this new department. Um, in 2020, all across the world, I'm getting a bit emotional here, but in 2020, all across the world, we experienced the most tremendous set of challenges, both in our personal and our professional lives. Um, and we, of course, would not have been recognised today without the collaboration of our amazing customers and partners across the world, um, including Alan and Unwin, Pansing and Jonathan Ball. We really have supported each other and I promise that we'll continue to do so. Thank you. How fabulous. Congratulations to our winning British Book Award for exports below £10 million, Nosy Crow. And so to the award for export sales over £10 million. The four nominations here should all be recognised for having achieved more growth in 2020, despite all of the challenges that the pandemic and Brexit has thrown in their way. And we go back to Mark Carney to reveal that winner. Hello again. I'm back with an even bigger award, an even higher value, uh, which is the British Book Award for export sales above 10 million pounds. And once again, I will reveal from the sealed envelope that the winner of the British Book Award for export sales above 10 million pounds is Bloomsbury. Congratulations, Bloomsbury, and congratulations, everyone, for a fantastic year. We won! Um, thank you so much. I could not be more proud of the team. Um, thank you to our amazing customers. So resilient, so creative, so wonderful. Um, thank you to Nigel and Kathleen, to everyone at Bloomsbury, the best colleagues ever. Um, so supportive of us as a team. And thank you to the whole international sales team, to Eleanor, Inez, Raina, Hattie, Joanna, Emma, you are the absolute dream um, and you make every day a pleasure. So congratulations and thank you everyone. Congratulations to our winning British Book Award for exports over £10 million, Bloomsbury. And thank you to Times Publishing Group and Pansing Distribution and to Mark Carney, Tidy's Charles of the Night. Well done. Now, the rights departments have been hit harder than most by the pandemic and they've had to be more resourceful and tenacious than ever. So this year, there are two awards, one for rights professional, an individual who went above and beyond, and a second for rights team after a year when everyone needed to be at the wheel. And this year's finalists did just that. To reveal the Rights Professional of the Year is an award-winning children's author, Nibby's shortlistee, and a fellow of All Souls College, Oxford. Her book, The Good Thieves, was a huge hit in 2019, and in 2020, she curated The Book of Hopes, words and pictures to comfort, inspire, and entertain. A hope anthology with over 130 contributions from leading authors and illustrators. I'm Catherine Rundle, and I'm a writer. And Every writer I know is so grateful to the rights professionals they work with because the rights professionals send our stories migrating out of their home countries and across the world. And they bring us stories in translation, new jokes and new ideas and new hopes. And without them, where would we be? I'm thrilled to be able to announce that the winner of Rights Professional of the Year is Canning Gates, Caroline Clark. Um, thank you so much uh, for this incredible um, opportunity and, uh, and award. And um, I am absolutely so thrilled um, to have won. And really it is also down to my brilliant um, colleagues, uh, Jessica Neal and Bethan Ferguson. Um, who are such a joy to work with. And so it's, it's been really nice to, um, in, in such a difficult year, um, to, to be working with them. Um, and also wanted to thank all my brilliant colleagues um, at Cangate uh, in every single department for um, their amazing work in, you know, making my work very easy in terms of um, sending out brilliant books and in with gorgeous covers and, you know, looking like very beautiful objects. Um, 
and also wanted to thank all our brilliant authors um, who have had a really challenging year last year as well and who still put out such brilliant work um, for us to sell. Caroline there, absolutely chuffed to bits. The cat on her lap, just not bothered, but that's cats for you. Winner of the Rights Team of the Year Award now, it's back to Catherine to reveal the winner. And the winner of the British Book Award for Rights Team of the Year is... The Nosy Crow Rights Team, congratulations. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, that's so amazing. Oh, thank you so much for this award. I'm really grateful to the bookseller and to the rest of the team, uh, to Erin, to Nuria and to Lucy, Kate, who is a rights girl at heart and she is kind of the soul of our publishing house and she keeps all of us together. And it's been challenging this past year, um, but we've managed to stick together. And that is kind of the thing that I'm most proud of. Um, and I'm really proud of the whole team. Um, so thank you so much. Oh, well done. Congratulations to Rights Professional of the Year from Canon Gates, Caroline Clark, and to Rights Team of the Year, Nosy Crow. And thanks to Catherine Rundle. Our next award is destined for the Literary Agent of the Year, and it's sponsored by Amazon Publishing, a leading publisher of trade fiction and non-fiction, print, Kindle, eBooks, and audiobooks. Seven finalists here who rose to the challenges of 2020 brilliantly, stepping up their author care while dealing with the havoc in schedules and promotions. To present this award, we are delighted to have the truly remarkable best-selling crime writer, broadcaster, campaigner and journalist. It's none other than Drida C. Mitchell. Hi, Nibbies. Hi, everyone. I'm Drida C. Mitchell. I'm a crime fiction writer and I've got one of these fantastic gold envelopes in my hand. And it is my honour to announce that the British Book Awards Literary Agent of the Year 2021 is Nell Andrew from Rachel Mills Literary. Well done, Nell. Congratulations. This is what I'm wearing right now for recording. Oh God, I really wish I hadn't worn my, my card again right now. I really wish I'd kind of glammed up a bit more. Um, oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, I, I oh. Thank you to everybody who, uh, who voted for me. And thank you to the Gin Craft Brewery that supplied whatever alcohol that allowed you to vote for me at the time. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to my amazing colleagues, Rachel Mills and Alexandra Cliff and Charlotte Bowman, who have just been a sort of ride or die team during one of the most difficult years this industry has ever faced. And without whom, to be honest, I just can't see how I would have thrived. They've been absolutely brilliant. And I want to thank first and foremost to my clients without whom I'm just a weirdo asking a publishers for money. But genuinely, I am honored to work with them. I am privileged that they would work with me. I think they are phenomenally talented. I think that they are doing things for literature and books that just make my heart sing. Um, I endeavor to always be worthy of them. And uh, I guess lastly, I sort of want to thank my husband who has to put up with a lot of crap from me because I'm obsessed with my work um, and who talks me through all my submissions and all my client stuff and listens to me bang on about this amazing author and their book and um, and who's been a fantastic invaluable support and um, and I cannot tell you how much it means to me to be a person who grew up in a pretty challenging environment um, it entered an industry that was predominantly full of people who did not look like me. And I always felt slightly out of place. And I know there are lots of people who feel out of place for various reasons, regardless of race or culture or creed. Um, but to have that kind of recognition is absolutely phenomenal. And I think I might be the first person of colour who's got this award. But I hope very much that I'm definitely not the last.
Oh, brilliant and love to see the Cardi off. That's when you know things have got serious. British Book Awards Literary Agent of the Year, Nell Andrew. And our thanks to Amazon Publishing and Drida C. Mitchell. Next, the award for Imprint of the Year, sponsored by market-leading book production specialist, Clays. There's a shortlist of 10 imprints here who between them dominated 2020's bestseller lists and major book prizes. And we have a high commendation for what the judges said had been a breakout year for an important list. It's a high commendation for dialogue. Well done to you. To reveal the winner, here's singer, songwriter, DJ, activist and now author. Her memoir, It Takes Blood and Guts, is out with Simon and Shuster now. Hi, my name is Skin and I'm absolutely delighted to be presenting the Imprint of the Year Award at the British Book Awards. May I have the envelope, please? Oh my God, you see? Give me that. Anyway, the imprint of the year is... Galance! Congratulations, well done. Well, that's, that, is, that is wonderful news. I am, I am so thrilled. I mean, I, I'm delighted to accept this award, imprint of the year for Galance and on behalf of the team, Gillian Redfern, Rachel Winterbottom, Brendan Durkin, Claire Ormsby Potter, and those who have left us in the last year or so, Anne Clark and Emily Lunn. It's been an amazing year for us. We are delighted to have this recognition, frankly. We're delighted that our books have found their readers and we shall keep on keeping on. Hopefully see you next year. Very, very well done to Imprint of the Year, Galance. And thank you to Clays and of course, Skin. It's time now to reveal this year's Editor of the Year, sponsoring this category, award-winning arts communications consultancy, FMCM. These 10 fiction, non-fiction and children's editors all command respect from their authors and had their loyalty richly repaid in commercial success in 2020. And to present this award is an author and activist who founded the groundbreaking Everyday Sexism Project in 2012. Since then, she has penned YA fiction and most recently, Men Who Hate Women, published by Simon & Schuster. Here's Laura Bates. It's been a year of incredible unsung heroes across the industry. The bookshop and library staff who've gone above and beyond the call of duty to continue getting books into readers' hands. And of course, editors who in extraordinarily difficult circumstances have continued to support their writers and nurture manuscripts. Like so many other authors, I've been so grateful this year for the incredible moral and professional support of my editors. And I don't envy the judges who had to decide on this incredibly strong shortlist. So I'm thrilled to announce that the editor of the year is Katie Loftus. Oh God. <laughs> oh wow, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> This is absolutely amazing and genuinely didn't think I would be getting this award. So huge thank you. Um, and I really couldn't have done it without the amazing team around me, supporting me um, and publishing the books that we published, particularly the Thursday Murder Club team. You're all amazing. We've had such a difficult year and we, I'm going to get emotional again. We really, really couldn't have done it without each other. So thank you. Um, and I also wanted to say that um, for, for anyone who feels like an outsider in the industry or like there isn't a place for you here, um, there are more of you than, than you think there are and we need you. So make your voice be heard and you know own it this this is a place for you um so yeah that's all <laughs> lovely words and a well-deserved victory congratulations to the british book awards editor of the year vikings katie loftus and thank you to fmcm and laura bates 
Our next presentation is new for this year and goes to the Designer of the Year. This award celebrates the people whose work often goes unheralded, but who are pivotal to publishing success. From the 10 nominations, a mix of in-house designers and freelancers who fused their creative flair and commercial sensibilities to produce some of the most visually striking and successful books of the past year. In this category, at least, you can definitely judge a book by its cover. Now, one of those receives a high commendation for a year which ran the gamut from startling original series rebrands to an iconic Booker winner, it's a high commendation for Pan Macmillan's Stuart Wilson. But to reveal the winner is an artist and world-renowned picture bookmaker whose critically acclaimed and multi-award winning books have sold over 14 million copies across the globe. His new release, There's a Ghost in This House, is published this autumn by HarperCollins Children's Books. Here's Oliver Jeffers. It's been a very important year for the book industry. I mean, those of us inside the industry have always known how important books are, but all it took for everybody else was to lock them up for an entire year, for they could also really remember how important books are. Because if you can't leave home, at least you can leave home in your own imagination. So, we always say, never judge a book by its cover. But that's not true. We all do. We do it every day. And it is my great pleasure to announce the designer of the year, the inaugural designer of the year, is Simon & Schuster's Jane Buckley. Congratulations, Jane. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness me. Oh, that's amazing. I think actually the, the one person that I really, really have to thank is my colleague, Helen Mackenzie Smith, who seriously, she is an absolute rock in everything that I do. If I didn't have her working with me, I'm sure we wouldn't have our, our, the most amazing books that we've got on our list. Um, she's a true, true genius and she's such a lovely person. Obviously, I want to thank um, Simon and Shuster, um, Rachel Denwood in particular, and the team around us who support me and allow me to be creative and to be the crazy self that I am. Um, and, um, you know, they, they bring the best out in me. And obviously my family who, um, you know, I, I didn't actually have a straight direction into design. I um, went a little bit skew with, as in um, I left school at 16. So thank you to my parents who allowed me then to follow this creative route and um, to be here now, which is just unbelievable. So thanks to them as well. Congratulations to the designer of the year, Simon and Schuster's Jane Buckley. And thank you to Oliver Jeffers. Next, the award for the Independent Bookshop of the Year, sponsored for the 11th year in a row by Gardeners, Europe's leading book and entertainment wholesaler. Well, no fewer than nine national and regional winners made the shortlist here, a mix of new and long established names. They are all worthy champions in their own right, but now compete for the overall prize to be crowned the best indie in the British Isles. So to reveal this winner, one of the most visionary artists of our time, former children's laureate. She arrived on the children's book scene in 1999 and since then has created much loved characters, including Ruby Redfort, Charlie and Lola, Hubert Horatio, and of course, Clarice Bean, who returns for a new adventure this Christmas with Think Like an Elf. It's Lauren Child. Independent bookshops are special because they're personal. When you walk into any of these shops, you're walking into a place that has been curated by an individual, which is why you very often see things that you've never seen before. And I think if we've learned anything during this past year, it's the importance of the personal and that individual approach. So I'm very, very uh, delighted to announce the winner of this year's Independent Bookshop of the Year, which is the Seven Oaks Bookshop. Congratulations. That is extraordinary. <laughs>
uh, oh my goodness, I'm just so enormously happy and um, thrilled about it um, and uh, thrilled on behalf of my whole team, all of the booksellers who have worked so enormously hard over the past year and also for our customers who have stuck with us through the thick and the thin and the horrendous drilling of the expansion when we first reopened. Um, but of all the years, I do wish I could share it with all the other booksellers who work so hard. Um, I'm so happy and grateful. <laughs> Thank you, Fleur. Absolutely delighted. That's wonderful to see. And congratulations to the Independent Bookshop of the Year, Seven Oaks Bookshop. And thanks to Gardeners and Lauren Child. Up next, it's Book Retailer of the Year, sponsored by Simon & Schuster, the proud home of best-selling authors and award-winning writers. Seven nominations here, including the winners of our Independent Bookshop and Children's Bookseller Awards, who all battled with a hugely challenging year and still found fresh and creative ways to get books into the hands of readers, keeping supply chains and sales moving. And to announce the winner, we are joined by the creators of the mega successful Super Potato series. This July, they're launching a brand new seriously sunny series called I Spy Island. It's Sue Hendra and Paul Linnett. Oh. Hi Paul, what have you been up to? Hi Sue, I've just been uh, making the new Super Potato book. It looks good. Yeah, yeah, I'm pleased with it. But what are you going to do with it now? Well, my plan is to go out and sell it. Hmm, how? I thought I'd just grab passers-by and ask them if they want a copy. Hmm, but then what will you do with the other 20,000 copies? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. What am I going to do? You know what we need? What do we need? We need a really good retailer. A book retailer? What about the book retailer of the year? Oh, that would be ideal. As nominated by the British Book Awards? Yes! How could we find out who that is? I think it's here. <laughs> Let's have a look then. Do the honours. Oh, thank you very much. Oh. The British Book Award for Book Retailer of the Year goes to... Moon Lane. Moon Lane. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh my God. That's amazing. God, it's been quite a year. This is incredible to just, you know, to be coming out of to, to this. Sorry, I actually feel really emotional. I'm so sorry. I, I genuinely am beyond words um, to hear this. It's um, my whole passion for the last 20 years has been, you know, running Tales on Moon Lane and watching it grow. And I'll drive again to raise equality for um, in children's books and to increase representation. And it's been such a a passion mission and I couldn't have done any of it without my business partners um, Paul Chin and Leah Chin and without the Moon Lane team um, and this again is you know a reflection of all of them and their hard work it's I feel embarrassed to sort of be here as the face of this because there is a, a you know small but incredibly dedicated team who works so hard for um, Moon Lane and um, we're so grateful for this award it means the absolute world to us particularly as we're starting um you know to sort of grow and reopen and it couldn't have come at a more wonderful time as we welcome all our customers back into the shops um so just thank you thank you again to the judges and to the sponsors and to the bookseller um and um a last thank you to my family who put up with so much in order um for me to be able to work with the team on all of the work that we're doing and thank you also to all the brilliant authors and illustrators that make our job such a joy every day when we open our boxes. Thank you all. She's going to need a bigger mantelpiece. Congratulations, Tamara. Thank you. And congratulations to the British Book Awards Book Retailer of the Year, Moon Lane. And thank you as well to Simon & Schuster, Sue Hendra and Paul Linnett. Our next presentation is to the Independent Publisher of the Year, sponsored by award-winning digital services agency Firsty Group, who focus almost exclusively on delivering digital services to publishers. The nine nominations here have demonstrated their agility and speed of thought, and they all pivoted superbly towards remote working, digital delivery, and direct selling. 
To tell us about this year's winner, well, she's returning to the Nibbies after joining us at Grosvenor House back in 2019. Remember physical events, they're just around the corner again. She's a British television broadcaster and presenter, director of diversity at the BBC and a champion for inclusion. Author of Diversify, The Power of Privilege and the Power of Women, she'll publish her memoir, The Only One in the Room, next year. Give it up for June Sarpong. Hi everybody, I'm June Sarpong. It's a pleasure to be with you all this evening, albeit virtually. Obviously, I would much rather be with you in person. Uh, that said, it is still an absolute honor uh, to be here to be able to present the winner of the British Book Awards Independent Publisher of the Year. I mean, this has been organized so well. I had this fabulous gold envelope sent to me. I have not touched it since it was sent and I'm opening it for the first time. So the Independent Publisher of the Year Award goes to Cannon Gate! This is the best news. Cannon Gate winning Independent Publisher of the Year at this year's British Book Awards is a massive achievement for the company. And what I love about this award so much, it goes out to every single person who works at Cannon Gate, which is why Cannon Gate is what it is, and every single author we publish who make Cannon Gate what it is. I want to also thank all the other people we work with in the industry, all the brilliant agents, the booksellers, the librarians, the publishers abroad, but really first and foremost, this is for my colleagues at Canongate and our wonderful list of writers. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, well, it's our pleasure. Obviously, congratulations to the Independent Publisher of the Year, Canongate, and thanks to Firsty Group and June Sarpong. What an incredibly important year for children's books it has been, and these nine contenders have risen to that challenge spectacularly, entertaining and educating children when they needed it most and achieving some outstanding commercial success in the process. To announce this winner, actor and TV presenter, who is best known as the energetic, smiling face of CBBC's book club, and now he can add British Book Awards judge and presenter to the CV. It's Rhys Stevenson. Hello everyone, hello British Book Awards. My name is Rhys Stevenson, the host of CBBC Book Club, and it is my honour to announce the award for Children's Publisher of the Year. Now, when I think about it, sometimes children's books do not get enough credit. Children have the best imagination out there and they are trusting authors not to waste their gift of imagination, but use it to transport them to new places that can inspire them, uplift them and give them memories that they carry with them for the rest of their lives. And that is a responsibility I don't think should be scoffed at. So without further ado, the Children's Publisher of the Year Award winner is... Wonderbly! <laughs> oh, <we've done> <laughs> amazing wow oh, so special everyone at wonderbly is going to be absolutely pumped to find that well i mean it's an absolute honor for wonderbly to to get this award we've been working super super hard for the past six seven years to to prove that personalized books are literature and uh we sold many many millions of books and made many customers happy so first and foremost it's a huge thanks to all of the customers that have bought Wonderbly books and supported us over the past seven years because we wouldn't we wouldn't have a business, of course, without those amazing customers all around the world. Uh, and then, you know, our operating model, it's uh, absolutely a team sport. We create all the content in-house. Uh, we build our own website. We manufacture all the books. We do all of our own marketing. You know, we run all of our finance and internal operations, our customer support. So huge, huge thanks and congratulations to everybody at Wonderbly. Um, special congratulations to ASI for getting it started in the first place and, uh, and being such an amazing leader. Yeah, a huge, a specific shout out to David Kajanubi, creative director of Wonderbly. He's written nearly all the books and guides all the creative work here. And, uh, you know, it's really his creative leadership that I think, you know, probably has won, won the judges over. Um, and so, yeah, special congratulations to him. Uh, well earned recognition for his hard work. I'm still a bit speechless, but uh, I want to thank Bookseller Magazine, who've always been 
you know, super, super supportive. I think that it was, what, in 2013 or 2014 that we were first invited to the Future Book Conference as the kind of shiny new thing on the block, uh, kind of disrupting the industry in, in some ways. Um, and um, it, it, it is a great honor to, you know, to feel that we've been fully embraced now by, by the industry, by the, by the community. And it's, uh, it's a great honor. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Children's Publisher of the Year Wonderbly, and thanks to Reese Stevenson. And so to our final award and one of the most hotly contested categories of the British Book Awards, the Publisher of the Year. No fewer than 11 nominations here, each displayed remarkable resilience and innovation in their response to the pandemic, embracing new opportunities and publishing many of the most commercially successful and critically acclaimed books of the year. One of those receives a judge's high commendation for demonstrating strong leadership and good judgment during the pandemic. It's a high commendation for HarperCollins. And to reveal our final winner, he is cricketer and commentator, world record holder and author, Michael Holding. Ladies and gentlemen, books are a very important commodity. And especially in the year 2020, during COVID and lockdown, we have been very thankful to the publishers to bring in out so many of them. The publisher of the year is Orion. Are you shitting me? Record that. <laughs> My mum might watch this. Obviously, first and most importantly, thanks to the authors who have been incredible and have worked so hard in such weird, weird circumstances and just somehow kind of carried on producing amazing books for us to work with. And that's been amazing. So thank you to all of our authors. Um, I want to say thanks to um, everyone at Hachette, um, everyone in group, particularly the group sales department who have also been incredible through the last year. Everyone at HHC because they have worked tirelessly um, for the whole year and did not have the luxury of not going in and went in every day to make sure that our books went out and went to retailers and got to our readers. And that has been the most Herculean effort and they've been incredible. And I'm so grateful for all of their work, everybody in the distribution center. Um, and thanks to David, just because I love embarrassing him um, because he is the best boss I've ever had and he's amazing um, and also obviously the people that I need to thank above everyone else are everyone at Orion all of my colleagues they really are the best team in the business and I'm so enormously proud of them and I'm so enormously happy that they have got this acknowledgement because it is their incredible work their creativity their professionalism their sense of fun their um, ambition that has got us to this point and so it's just wonderful to to have them and their work acknowledged in this way and it, truly, truly, truly enormously proud and happy and thankful and no swearing. Oh, and also I should um, thank obviously booksellers because they have also done the most phenomenal job in the weirdest of circumstances and obviously without um, their passion and their commitment, we wouldn't get our books to our readers. So booksellers forever. Ah, with apologies to Katie's mum and congratulations to the British Book Awards Publisher of the Year, the Orion Publishing Group, and very many thanks to Michael Holding. Well, that's it for this year's British Book Awards. Congratulations to all the winners and respect to the other shortlistees. Huge thanks to the judges and all our award presenters and to all of the sponsors who've helped support this year's event. Enjoy your celebrations wherever you are and please do keep up the fantastic work. So until next year, when I hope to see you all in person at a physical event, it's goodbye from me and thank you for watching.